Accounting Services. How are you doing, Andrew? Yeah, not bad, not bad. How are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. Very well. Welcome back to this new episode, right? So if you are watching for the first time, make sure you go back and watch the previous two, right? And the last one, if I'm not mistaken, we talked about uh, banking, right? So finding a good uh, banking service for your business. Is, an, is, is that right, Andrew? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, perfect. All right. Excellent. So today I'm really excited about today's topic. We're going to be talking about good record keeping. Uh, very important with coaches. Right. And I'll be completely honest. When I first started my business, this was something I needed a lot of help with. OK, because as your business starts to grow, you know, you're doing a lot of things um, and, and having a good record keeping, I feel, is really important. And to be honest with you, the most successful coaches that we currently work with in our company uh, have this to, to a T. So I'm really excited about this. And thank you, Andrew, again for, for coming on uh, and sharing your experience and your knowledge with us. Yeah, no problem at all. No problem at all. Um, yeah. Shall I get shall I get started? Yeah. yeah get cracking yeah. away. All right. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. So I think it's it's definitely follows on from what we're talking about banking and as a business owner new business owner even a growing um business you want to make sure that your record keeping is 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 great because that does lay the foundation to a healthy business so i want to kind of start going to the legal requirement first there are in the uk there are legal requirements to keep um keep records business records uh first one is is six years if you don't if you don't keep good records uh you could be fined up to three thousand pounds it could even be worse for you there could be court hearings disciplinary hearings uh, and also investigations by um by certain professional bodies as well especially if you if, if it's in auditing if if you're a large business, there could be uh, audits into your business. Obviously, we don't want to go into into that, but uh, it's just to give a bit of an overview of yes, there is a legal requirement to um, to your records keeping uh, compliance. So the so next let, bit, let me let me yeah. just stop you there, Andrew. Sorry, like if uh, yeah. any coach watching who might not understand when you talk about legal requirement, is that what? what the coach is making money coming in the profits it's in terms of in terms of record keeping we're talking about um keeping receipts keeping invoices sales invoices having a good um system because if hmrc whether you're a sole trader or you're a limited company uh you could get a, an audit from them an okay. inquiry whatever it may be and it's to ensure that everything is accounted for and you've got the source documents i.e as i mentioned the receipts invoices uh right. bills things like that okay perfect perfect yeah uh yeah so so the next part is um just general financial management of your business as i, as I said it's having a good record keeping system really lays a foundation of a healthy business and just to skim over these and we will provide a, a copy of this this mind map as well, but essentially you want to know your money coming in. You know you want to know um, what when you're expecting money from clients, um, chasing clients, things like having a payment system set up. You know maybe something like a direct debit. Um, Leo, when you know in your experience as well in your business and working with coaches. It's so much better having a um, a direct debit payment system yeah. where you don't have to worry about chasing clients all the time. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent agree. Um, and also from experience, I know that the coaches who kind of become a little bit more organised, they end up making a lot more money in the long term. Uh, at the beginning, I know I've worked I've worked with a lot of coaches who are all over the place with with their their with this side of the of the business but once they get organized they find someone professional uh, like yourself to help them 
Uh, what they end up then doing is they end up making a lot more money uh, because when they're unorganized, they're losing a lot of money because they're not uh, keeping track of money coming in, money coming out, receipts, invoices, etc. Yeah, exactly. And when you know, when even when you're starting out your business, you're 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 quite busy, and you don't want to um, be tied down with knowing, okay, what's next? You know, um, payments coming from clients, and keeping track of that can be quite um a lot of admin side so you want to have certain uh, systems in place to allow you to free up time uh and even things like refunds um from um even if it's from suppliers uh or if if a, a client has overpaid you or underpaid you you want to make sure you, you you keep track of that you know um and i can understand having a busy uh a busy sports coaching business um, some things can slip through and it's and it's the importance of having a good system in place to uh, to avo avoid that from happening. Mm -hmm. Same things with, you know, money out. You know, you want to make sure that you're paying the right amount of taxes. If you have um, other employees in the business, you want to make sure you're paying the right amount to to the right, uh, you know, employee. If you've got suppliers, you want to pay the right amount. You don't overpay your suppliers. You don't underpay them because that obviously can be, things like um you want to have a good working relationship and it all starts with knowing exactly you know what amounts to pay uh even if it's subcontractors if you're subcontracting a uh you know another coach for whatever reason you want to make sure that you that they're paid on time and the right right amount because you want to have a good working relationship with them um same thing with you know with with lenders if you've you know loans if you're paying a loan out, you want to make sure you're paying the right amount. You don't want to get charged any additional interest on that. So it really is helpful uh, for your business overall. Can you uh, can you yeah. give coaches, because this is something that I get asked on a, on a regular basis. A lot of coaches want to bring in a subcontractor to help them with, uh, you know, the growth of the business, running extra training sessions. So what's a couple of tips in terms to help them with the legal side that they need when they bring in a subcontractor, such as like contracts, invoices, et cetera? Yeah, so so that's a good question. And it kind of it really does flow into the, the third bit. But but a bit more on that is. First of all, to start with, with a sports coaching business, the first thing to do is you don't need to set up a you know a payroll system for them not yet anyway especially if you're a gro growing business you want to pay them on you know an hourly basis you might want to get them part-time and they will just be treated as a subcontractor so having maybe a good um contract with them yeah uh the de detailing the uh the the work that they're going to be carrying out um it, it is good and ensuring that they invoice you as the business for the amount of, of hours worked. So everyone is on the same page. Now, when your business grows and you may want to have, you know, a, a part-time employee or a full-time employee, then you would have to set up a payroll scheme to then pay that employee um, through the PAYE system. So, uh, so yeah, and that, to be honest, that really does, um, flow through to to the next part which is you know tracking your performance because as you said as a sports coaching business you want to know at what point is it worth getting a subcontractor at what point is it good to get a part-time employee full-time employee now if you have a really bad record keeping system and you don't know how your business is doing based on on that information very hard for you to make those decisions and you know and here as you said you know identify opportunities for growth you can then hire additional coaches but as i said it's important to get the foundation pieces in place which is good record keeping mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and another part of this is is time and cost saving is if you have well organized records that means that you're spending less time doing all the admin side you've got good systems in place uh, you can track invoices to customers um, send them to customers automate it as well that saves time mm 
-hmm. And, um, you know, you can then start planning and filing your taxes on time as well. And that allows you to plan for the future, better for cash flow. And, you know, if you've got any queries with customers or suppliers, let's say, for example, uh, a supplier believes that you've owed them, that, that they owe you, uh, sorry, that you owe them more money, your suppliers, you can look into your invoices, your bills. But if you've got a really bad record keeping system, you're going to be there ages. And I've had some, I've had some businesses that they just believe whatever the supplier says and they just pay them more. But in actual fact, their system is is quite bad and uh, and they've had to get a refund from them. Same mm -hmm. thing with uh, with your, your customers, your clients. If you've got uh, people that they believe that they paid you already, but you're like, oh, no, you haven't actually paid me. Have good yeah. systems in place to show that. Um, so it does save time and money uh, in the long run. Okay. So question for you, going back to business growth, because this is yeah. another common question I get. At what point do you think a coach should bring in an additional coach? So a business owner bringing in additional coach to help them with the business yeah so it really depends on the the scenario so for example if the business needs if, if you're if you're a coach you may need temporary um a temporary coach just to fill in let's say you're ill or that that could be quite early on now if your business is turning over a good amount of money let's say for example for sure you want to make sure that you're breaking even that's one of the, the the basics you want to make sure you're breaking even and let's say you're beyond capacity in terms of your time and you want to focus more time on let's say marketing or things like that that's probably a good time to bring in a, a coach and you want to test out the waters as well you want to make sure you 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 bring in different types of coaches get feedback from the participants as well, um, fr from the clients, get feedback because that will be something where in the future you might want to have them, you know, part time or, or full time. So it, it really, yeah. So that, that's the thing. You want to make sure you're first of all, you're breaking even. And then the best um, time to do it is when you as a coach, you are just at full ca capacity and you've got a lean business model. For example, your expenses aren't too high for what the business requires. That is the best time to bring in uh, an additional coach. Great piece of advice there. Like it. All right. And then just a couple of other things now, um, just to wrap up, is sale of business. You know, as a sports coach, I know early on in the, in, in, in your journey, you, you're not probably going to be thinking about selling your business in the future. Uh, you may want to do something else. But. If you do want to have an exit strategy strategy, and in two, three years, you're thinking about selling your business, well, you've got to know that you've got to have at least three years of impeccable accounts, good record keeping, because any buyers of your business, that's the first thing they're going to ask for, mm -hmm. um, good accounts. So that's one thing that I would say as well, um, especially for growing businesses. They want to do different things. They want to sell their business. And it all starts with good record keeping. And it's not good doing it last minute because that's a that's a pain <laughs> trying to backdate everything yeah. so that's one thing as well it's just it's about future planning mm -hmm. and the last thing is tax relief you know knowing knowing that you can get pre-trading expenditure for your business so what that means is you can essentially take into account seven years before starting your business any expen expenses incurred for that business but it's important to know that you have the right receipts yes. the right invoices bills um to ensure that it's an allowable expense and uh and an another thing as well is that re refund so if you ever become uh that registered in the future and that's for businesses that are turning over 85,000 so obviously it's a future thing you can actually have a VAT refund four years prior to registering but it also means you're going to have a good record keeping system to ensure 
you can account for all those expenses um, f over those four years. So there, and these are just a couple really, but it's it's important as you can as you know it's it's really important in so many aspects of of the business journey. I like that. So for obviously, there's going to be coaches all around the world watching this. Um, so every country has their own tax system, but what I've well, what we've noticed is that mainly the coaches we work with are in the US and in and, and UK. The systems are quite similar. So obviously do your research. But for any coach watching, so just to recap, so if you started your business, for example, in 2007, right, you can expense it from 2000. So from seven years back. Is that right? Correct. Correct. And that's that's the pre-trading expenditure. And as you mentioned as well, in the US, there's gonna they're gonna have a similar sort of tax relief system. Yeah. And you know, at the end of the day, you've got to make sure that if you do get an accountant, if you have good record keeping, not only will they charge you less fees because you've got a good record keeping system anyway, because you don't really need an accountant, you know, especially if you're starting out or you're thinking about it. Um, just make sure that you have everything in place. Because then when that accountant gives you advice in terms of, oh, you can expense X, Y, and Z, if you've got a good record keeping system, it's it's easy. It's easy yeah. because there are a lot of accountants out there. And, and it is true. If you don't have the paperwork for it, you just, you, you can't expense it, essentially. Yeah. That, that's, yeah. that's, you know, that's the nuts and crannies of it. Of course, there are other ways like, you know, for example, bank statements and um, and things like that looking at bank statements but it really depends on the amount and it gets quite complicated so having having the receipts the invoices saves so much time i like that that's good 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 advice because i know a lot of coaches and have spoken to a lot who they they don't they don't take these things into account they they just do session after session after session they're making money uh, but then they don't keep their receipts they don't invoice and then when they get to a stage where they have to set up their business legally uh, or properly, shall we say, uh, there's a lot of things that they're, they're losing out on, as as you mentioned, right? They could have tracked seven years behind and and expensed a lot of the stuff that they, they might have bought, such as equipment, uh, et cetera. So I yeah. think that's a that's, that's really good piece of advice there. Yeah, no, of course. And, and I come across a lot of businesses that they just don't know these things they don't know these things and they're scared because they don't want they don't have the resources to get an accountant but you know a, a series like this that we're doing it's really good because it it gives um new business owners um a bit of an insight into how to you know have a a good foundation for a successful business mm -hmm. perfect so if you if if there's a coach out there watching who is looking to start a business or is that like the starting stages it was a little piece of advice you can give them before they actually bring on an accountant to help them with their, their taxes and the legal side yeah i would say do as do as much research as possible in mm -hmm. terms of um you know setting up a business of course have a look at the uh the podcast series we're doing that gives you a good uh, insight into these things but yeah do research go on to government websites some of the information can be quite uh, detailed but they do mm. tend to uh, create information which is easy to read mm. and I would say start with that and you know do things properly you know watch watch the podcast understand that keeping good records um is is so important for their business and then once they've got that foundational knowledge uh because as a business owner you do have a duty to understand your business finances you, you can't ignorance is not something that the uh you know that hmrc uh the tax authorities will uh will say that's an acceptable excuse <laughs> <laughs> yeah Love that. Perfect. So making sure that you obviously have all your receipts for any expenses that you make at the beginning, 
And then obviously yeah. invoice tracking as well is important. Yeah, exactly. And just looking, as I said, go into your, um, you know, the the website for HMRC or um, the tax, uh, like, you know, the, the government website, they have good information on there as well. And uh, a lot of it is in very kind of simple, plain English. So definitely a good starting point there as well. Perfect. All right, Andrew. Well, thank you very much again for coming on, sharing sharing your, your knowledge on this, this topic. Right. So if you're a coach watching, again, you've enjoyed what this this type of content, go back, watch our previous ones. Uh, and Andrew, thank you again. And I look forward to our upcoming chat where we're going to be talking about something different in in relation to the, the legal side of a sports coaching business. Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks for having me, uh, Leo. Take care. You too.